Hello, and welcome to Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Ty Johnson, and today we're going to be talking about getting back in shape. The weather's breaking, and we just want to get back out there and do what we have to do to make ourselves healthier. And in that vein, our first guest with us today is Mr. Eric Rudy. He's the director of the Belfield Recreation Center, which is right here near the South Campus. Eric, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Eric, I wanted to ask you first off, when we think of a recreation center, uh, I spent a lot of time at Belfield as a kid. What does the rec center provide that the streets don't provide? Well, the rec center provides uh, programming uh, and, and even the things to do without uh, programming um, to keep people active, keep them busy, to, to fill in a lot of idle time, and, and hopefully uh, develop your skills, develop you personally. Uh, the, it's really endless, the, the different uh, varieties uh, of programming and uh, uh, activities we can do at a rec center. So if I'm a young 12-year-old and I want to get out there because I've been sitting at home at the computer all year and I want to get back out and, and do some kind of physical activity and I find my way up to Belfield, what are some of the things that I could find myself doing? Uh, now, Belfield has uh, recently been used by FEMA uh, to uh, help with disaster uh, conditions that uh, existed, I believe, because of the rains back in September, uh, August. Uh, so the programming at Belfield is, uh, did not exist in the, in the fall of last year, and it's impacted the winter also. We're trying to redevelop, uh, re, uh, uh, restart some programs, including after school. So mm -hmm. that 12-year-old that uh, uh, is looking for something to do, we're establishing a, an after-school basketball program that uh, will be able to uh, put him on a team. Uh, give him some direction. He'll be part of the team. He'll uh, interact with his uh, with his peers. Uh, it's an under 12 basketball league, uh, 12 and under rather. I'm sorry. So, pretty much it would go sixth grade and below. Um, now we're trying to engage them uh, into the physical activity. Along with that, we'll be able to to feed them uh, with assistance from uh, a food program that we have, right. and also be able to help them with homework help. Right. Now that's after school, uh, and that sets the bare minimum. We're trying to uh, not only have an after school, but have other activities during uh, the, the the time that's after school before six o'clock. Right. Now after six o'clock, we have a uh, basketball. Uh, there are basketball leagues that uh, uh, that use Bellfield, right. and there are leagues that we will be running. Uh, at present, uh, we don't run a league, but we have uh, three leagues that uh, are going to be using our our facility between the hours of 6 and 9 o'clock, roughly. So I haven't been up to Belfield recently. It's been a, a little while, not very long, but uh, I was told that you all are going to be doing some restructuring, reprogramming. Could you give us a, a purview of what that's going to look like? Well, I, again, the sky's the limit with this. Uh, I have a lot of diff well, a lot of varied experiences, and uh, so there's a lot of different things I'd like to do. Um, now, there's programs that we have there right now uh, for dance, for uh, other performing arts. Hmm. Uh, let's call it, uh, you know, some exercise classes, uh, a uh, taekwondo. But we want to add other things involving uh, per, uh, visual art. Right. Visual arts meaning something that sticks, you know, painting, right. uh, ceramics, uh, you know, other things like that. Uh, I'd like to have uh, part of our program represented by some of the visual arts uh, and also some other uh, some other sports, try to vary that. Uh, some of the sports we're looking at uh, are include volleyball. Uh, I guess it would be considered a sport, uh, ping pong. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to, to Asia, it's, it's a sport. Right. Here, uh, it seems to be just a, a way to pass time. Right. But uh, there are some, some really good players in the city. Uh, that remember 10 years ago, maybe when they they had uh, more ping pong uh, playing at the rec center. Now at Belfield Rec Center, I know it's different from many rec centers. First of all, let's let our viewers know where you're located. You're at the corner of 21st and Chu. 21st and Chu. Um, it runs for two blocks. It's not two full blocks, but uh, uh, one block has uh, the corner of Chu has uh, a rec center that has a full-size gym, has a 
kitchen, two meeting rooms, a, a room that we set aside for a game room, another room we set aside for a dance room, and a third room we set aside that has computers. And we're going to be using that uh, for, you know, as, as part of our after school, but also uh, for other programs that I'd, I'd like to get involved in, uh, one being robotics. Now, outdoors, I know you have a uniquely different rec center in that you have a pool, mm -hmm. and across from the pool, there's a full-fledged baseball field. There is a baseball field. The, uh, there's one group that plays on it uh, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. They have a, a softball league. And uh, we're going to get our, our ball field redone. Yeah. It, it should be within the next month. Wow. And so, you know, we're going to make it look nice, and hopefully if we build it, they'll come. But, uh, you know, we'd like to start a smaller program, too, for, uh, for kids. With, uh, if, if we started at T-Ball, maybe we can, you know, in, say, five years. If we look five years down the road, maybe we can say, you know, there's so much going on at Bellfield because of, you know, having invested in the youth, these young youth. We can get five-year-olds as opposed to the six-year-olds. You have a pool, too. Now, is there a pool, a full-size pool? Uh, the pool is, uh, uh, it's got a maximum uh, depth of five feet. So, and it does have a smaller uh, end to it. So, uh, it's, it's good for, for kids and adults. Now, there will be a swimming team. Uh, every, virtually every pool in the city uh, will have a, uh, a swim team. And swim teams will compete in uh, different meets depending on their levels. So you, the kids who live in that area can come and compete and go out for the swimming team? Right. We'll, we'll have a, yeah, anybody that's in the Bellfield area uh, will be able to come. And generally it's going to be 4 to 5 o'clock uh, for swim team practice. Hmm. And uh, somewhere in uh, about a month into the season, we're uh, going to be doing some some meets. Uh, we'll, start, we'll start off with a district meet. Now the district, there's eight district uh, recreation districts, recreation parks districts in Philadelphia. We're one of eight, so we'll have a district meet and then uh, we'll have a, uh, a citywide meet after that. So you have swimming, you have a full-size diamond baseball field, right. you have indoor activities, mm -hmm. full-length basketball court. Right. So if somebody wants to come and be become physically active, mm -hmm. Belfield would be the place for them to come. That would be that would be perfect. Uh, you know, the, the one thing you haven't mentioned, we do an outdoor court or two outdoor courts. That's right, outdoor. you do. And we also have a play area, so you can get the kids recreating there. I've seen it like a sandbox area, like. Well, I wouldn't say sandbox, but uh, it's got swings, uh, slides, and other various playground equipment that uh, the kids can use. So every child, adult even senior adult, they can come to Belfield and they'll be able to find something or Absolutely. some type of activity to do. Now the Taekwondo, those are, you have Taekwondo classes? That, that's a separate, that, that's an instructor. Now we rely on uh, a lot on uh, organizations coming to use the space that we have. Yeah. We don't have enough staff to run all the activities. Yeah. So we really appreciate having volunteers uh, come and say, you know, I've always wanted to do a dance class. I've always wanted to do uh, an exercise program. I always hmm. wanted to do this or that. You know, whatever they want us to do, we'll probably be able to work with them. Now, uh, I will say that uh, if if we can get the word out, I'd one group I'd really like to to approach is uh, the older generation, the generation that knows what it's like to be at Belfield, right? Uh, the generation that uh, that probably needs more interaction, and uh, you know, they they would they're that be my age group. Oh, oh, older than me, then. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm 23, so I think uh. that my age group is there. But the, the, no, I'm just kidding. I'm 25. But the, the age group, you would say from 40 on up, w would that be a good age group to have? That would be a great age group to have, with, yeah. the, with the younger generation. And one thing about, uh, about this is virtually every rec center that I know, is the more adults you have involved in activities, the more diverse the programming and the more valued the programming is. Right. Now, one of the questions I had is when a person comes to a rec center and they want to work out or they want to take some kind of class or some type of instructional activity, uh, do you find that once a person gets excited about doing something new or learning a new skill, that something clicks on the inside and they, and they become excited about it? Pretty much, uh, you know, that's how it happens. It's, it's, it's that initial jump 
right uh, that really gets them going and, and the ones that uh, you know put a little bit more behind it you know they're they're intended to to keep going on and on and those are the people that uh, they will keep these programs going and, and encourage others to, to become involved if, if it's a change the program so now that baseball field is like a multi-purpose field so you can if somebody wants to come in and learn how to play soccer or or if they want to do some other type of field activity, it, it would be available for that? Yes. One of the, uh, the things that I want to do is uh, uh, begin the, the soccer program and uh, you know, start at the five-year-old, six-year-old level. Uh, and so maybe in five years we have people that we have enough people involved that we could put together teams and uh, you know, participate. That would be exciting. I'd like to participate, too, just as, as a uh, person standing on the side cheering for those who are <laughs> doing the activity. So. Uh, but I, that, that's really exciting because Belfield Rec Center, and if they wanted to call the Rec Center, could you give us the number real quick? Yes, it's 215-685-2220. That's 215-685-2220. Yes. Thank you, Eric, for being on the program, and we look forward to what's happening at Belfield Rec Center. Thank, Thank you, you again. I look forward to seeing you. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Bridging the Gap. We're discussing about getting outside and getting active and getting yourself all revved up to get in shape. And so we have with us Seth and Linda. Would you guys introduce yourself and the organizations you represent? Linda. Oh, hi. I'm Linda McLean. I'm from Bicycle Club of Philadelphia. And Seth. Seth Weiss. Uh, I'm from Philly Runners Running Club. Okay, so from that our audience can kind of get cycling and running. Those are two, I would say, great exercises. Starting with you, Linda, cycling. How did you first get involved in cycling? I started cycling um, in high school. I started riding my bike with my dad. He started cycling uh, for health reasons, for fitness reasons. Hmm. And he and I started riding together. I joined the Bicycle Club of Philadelphia in the early 1990s. And the Bicycle Club has, was founded in 1979. Hmm. So it's been around for a long time. Wonderful. How about you, Seth? How did you get into running? I started running in uh, ninth grade, um, in about 1989, to uh, lose weight and uh, general exercise, health, and fitness. And I joined uh, Philly Runners Running Club in 2002. Uh, the club at that point had only been around for six months, and now we're about to celebrate our 10-year anniversary. Wonderful. Now, guys. Uh, for our viewing audience who might want to take up something recreationally, what would you say to them to, if they say, well, I don't think, I think bike riding, I think that's something I can handle. What suggestions or tips would you give to a beginner? Well, uh, for a beginner, I would suggest um, visiting our website, phillybikeclub.org, um, and search the website. You know, we have rides for all levels of ability from A, which is advanced, to D, which is novice, for novice riders. And we have A, B, C, and D levels. Um, there, if there are any questions, you can send an email to info at phillybikeclub.org. And look at the ride schedule and look for the rides that are advertised as D or novice level rides. Uh, every ride on the ride schedule should have the leader's name and contact information. So you can always contact the ride leader to find out more information about that specific ride. Also on the website, we have information on what types of things to bring on a, on a group ride. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need a bicycle in good working condition. Mm -hmm. Aside from the bicycle, the next most important thing is a helmet. You must wear a helmet. Mm -hmm. And other necessary items, um, water bottles, snacks, uh, spare tubes, hatch kit. If, you, if it's been a long time since you've um, experienced physical exercise, you might want to get a physical with your physician, make sure you're in good enough health to, uh, to exercise outdoors. Um, but it really research the website, uh, it, and there's a lot of good information there. You would also uh, want, to ha want to take your bicycle to your local bike shop to make sure it's in proper mechanical working order. Thank you, that's excellent, excellent tip. How about you, Seth, if somebody says, well, I want to get out there and start jogging or something. The first thing I'd 
say is make sure to have a good pair of running sneakers. Um, general recommendation is you replace your running sneakers every three to 500 miles. Um, I would recommend if you're just starting out and you don't even have a pair of running sneakers, get running sneakers at a good running store where they can check you out and figure out what kind of shoe you need as opposed to just a, a general store that happens to sell running sneakers. Give, give me an example, what kind of store? Um, a running specialty store that sells mostly running clothing and running shoes. Um, there's a few in town, uh, such as Rittenhouse Sports and Philadelphia Runner, not to be confused with our running club, <laughs> Philly Runners. And then there's, there's one up on Fairmount now, Fairmount, Fairmount Running Company, I think. <laughs> Those really specialize in runners and running shoes, running apparel. Um, get yourself a good pair of running shoes. Check out our website. Um, What's your website address? Our website is phillyrunners.org. Uh, email is info at phillyrunners.org. Email is go to me. And we have, we have maps, we have running tips, we have a uh, page on uh, running safety. All of our runs are open to runners of all abilities. Come out and run with us. If you've never run before, that's okay. Come out and do what you can. And, um, you know, I think pe people who come out on a regular basis will quickly improve and find that they're pretty quickly running with the rest of the club. Hmm. Interesting. Now, Linda, for somebody who wants to take up cycling and they want to do it for exercise, they say they want to lose weight, they want to have a healthier life, mm -hmm. how, have you, how has it benefited you personally from a health standpoint? Bicycling um, and joining the bicycle club is one of the best decisions I've ever made because bicycling itself is obviously very healthy exercise, physical exercise. But when you join a club, when, when you ride with a group, it's also social. Right. Uh, you get to meet a lot of wonderful people, make a lot of wonderful friends, and it also gives you the opportunity to interact with the environment and to kind of commune with Mother Nature, to appreciate nature around you. Mm -hmm. So for example, this time of year, I believe we're in the middle of the Cherry Blossom Festival, really? which uh, is along the River Drives in Fairmount Park. Right. Um, and if, it's, if it hasn't started yet, it'll be starting soon in April, the Cherry Blossoms. Philadelphia is really a lovely city. Yes, and it's it a is. beautiful, picturesque city to see by bicycle. Yes, it is. So uh, bicycling has been very, um, transformative in my life, physically, but also socially. And um, you learn a lot of important lessons, too. Sometimes um, if you're doing a bike ride, you think, oh, I just, I can't make it to the end, I can't make it to the finish. You learn the importance of virtues like perseverance and persistence. Even if you have to slow down your pace, right. you will eventually get to the, to the end of the ride. You will get to the finish, and you get stronger. So you l I've learned a lot of important lessons about life through cycling. That is, that's amazing. So when I think of cycling, I would think of the competitive edge, mm -hmm. you know, but recreationally, I would think it would be just as challenging and just as uh, beneficial as if you were competing. And how about you, Seth? Uh, what has running done for you? Well, I, I have made a lot of friends in my running club and both fr friends to run with and friends to uh, hang out with outside of running. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I have a similar answer to Linda. Be, uh, join, joining Philly Runners is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Uh, I have more friends and I'm a far stronger runner than I was before joining the club. Excellent. So running and cycling, uh, along with, I know people say walking is a really good exercise, but what we want to say to our audience is just get active do something, and, and cycling, it's not an expensive uh, hobby, uh, and running, of course, is other than the running shoes itself, it's not an expensive uh, hobby to get into. But one of the questions I have for the both of you, Linda, you first, and then you, Seth, has it been your experience that people, uh, I read a f statistic that 40% of the people in this country are obese, 
and 60% of the people in this country are overweight. Has it been your experience to see people who perhaps started cycling when they were huge like, like I am and then you've seen them uh, over time, their weight come down or they become more healthy or become uh, a better cyclist? Have you, has that been your experience? Oh, absolutely. Um, when a person first becomes a cyclist or first starts cycling with a club and increases his level of involvement in cycling, usually that person will lose weight as well as gain fitness. Mm. Now there's also, there are other components too. Um, it's advantageous to lose weight to ride faster on the bike, to ride right. more efficiently. Right. So many times a cyclist will also improve his or her eating habits, nutrition habits at the same time. Right. And also complement or enhance the cycling with other exercises which also help to lose weight. Right. So um, it's a little bit of a circular process. So cycling can help you to lose weight, but then cycling can also inspire you to want to do other healthy things to lose more weight, which will help you improve your cycling efficiency. So it has a holistic effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Seth? Definitely ru running, I think, is one of the most effective ways to lose weight and also, uh, you know, ben benefit your heart aerobic conditioning. Um, likewise, the, the more you run, the less time and the, the you're not going to want to do other things that are unhealthy because sure. if you really get into running, you'll find that these other things, excessive drinking, excessive eating, whatever, interfere with your ability to run. Mm -hmm. We have a run every Saturday at 9 a.m. Well, all those people who come out with us, they're not out drinking on Friday night. Right. Uh, if you're not out drinking on Friday night, you're probably doing something that's better for you on Friday night. And then you're running on Saturday morning also. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, I, ev everybody in our club generally le leads a very healthy lifestyle and uh, they only get healthier as they run with us more and more. Now, I know both of you probably have seniors that do what you do, what you do recreationally. So it's a benefit for everyone, seniors, young people, middle age, those people who we would normally call couch potatoes who want to get back into something. Cycling and running are, are two major ways that they can make the healthy improvements that they want to see in their life. Because uh, I know you watch some of these infomercials where they say, oh, you take this pill and you're going to that. That stuff is, not, uh, first of all, it doesn't work. But secondly, I would think that the way you guys are doing it is extremely healthy. And you can see incrementally your health increasing and getting better and increasing your cardiovascular uh, uh, ability. So I would suggest to anyone watching this program that they look on your website or your website and find out the information and get active. Whatever it is, cycling, get active. You know, start with that first cycling affair. You know, you, you may do a mile, you may do two miles, but uh, and gradually increase your time. And along with running, uh, I guess in the beginning, you, they may do a little bit of time and then gradually do more time. So thank you guys for both being on, and we hope that this will motivate somebody to want to get uh, active. Again, I'm Ty Johnson, your host. When one's on the right, another's on the left. When we reach towards the middle, we begin to bridge the gap. Until next time, love somebody and be nice to everybody. Bye for now.